truth is stranger than fiction they say and conspiracies surely are often strange. Plenty of people think conspiracies are a crock and do not exist, ever. I guess those people were never backstabbed by friends or other people conspiring against them cause they decided to come out on top. I guess things like that don't happen in corporations and governments because those people are actually professionals and adults and do things how it should be done for the good of all mankind, and not merely to fill their own pockets or to make sure she ends up on top, right? Anyways, here's 10 movies that touch the conspiracy theory route, fake news films or so they claim. Nitrum is the true story of Martin John Bryant, a convicted Australian mass shooter who murdered 35 people and injured 23 others in the Port Arthur massacre. The director of the movie decided to use this name to deflect attention from the man but... Yeah? Search engines exist, dude. Calablandry plays Nitrum, an intellectually disabled young man who is mocked teased and ignored all around for being different. The age-old tale of isolation and frustration. When he meets and befriends a reclusive various things appear to get a bit better but when that relationship tragically ends and a family drama expires it fuels the trigger towards the final act, the act of mass murder. This movie is part of this conspiracy list mainly because there are people out there that think this spree was a ploy by the Australian government. The act this kid did did ensue a lockdown on gun ownership in Australia and changed gun laws severely. Being a hot topic in most Western countries that still have gun laws I can understand that there's some doubt but I suggest reading up on the conspiracy stuff yourself if you are so inclined. The movie itself though it a well made and often endearing movie about a guy who had a deep resentment for the people around him and saw only one recourse when his world starts tumbling down. It strikes me as weird that they don't mention his real name in the film but still managed to garner sympathy for the lad, at least up to the point where he starts killing innocent people. Smash that. Marathon Man is a mid-70s political conspiracy thriller where Dustin Hoffman plays a character called Babe, a simple dude who likes to run. He's a PhD candidate in history at Columbia University paying homage to his father who did the same studies after which he committed suicide after being investigated during the communist witch hunts. When his older brother, coincidentally a CIA operative, arrives in the city things get a little bit more complicated, and a little bit more paranoid. Marathon Man is a classic, some of the imagery in the movie may be even iconic, at least to me. It has several great actors besides Hoffman such as Roy Schneider and William Devin and is a very well made conspiracy thriller. I've read there are a lot of plot holes but watching the movie I didn't really care about them. It keeps your attention and allows you to unravel the conspiracy slowly but gradually. Add to this the typical 70s grit and you got something delightful for conspiracy nuts. What the conspiracy is our leave for you to find out. There's many to choose from after all. Smash that. The Scary of 61st is an independent movie about, well, the Epstein murder. Hashtag Epstein didn't kill himself, nor did McAfee, Pizzagate and the worldwide conspiracy of elites and royals kidnapping, abusing and killing children. Welp. Heavy stuff right the heart. Very heavy. Anyways, we follow two seemingly good friends who decide to rent an apartment in Manhattan. The caveat, it is one of the apartments Jeffrey Epstein used for his, um, hobbies. With mirrors on the ceiling and stained mattresses nightmares enter into one girl's mind. When another woman mysteriously knocks on the door and reveals some truth we get pushed into a whirlwind of conspiracies, madness, symbolism and sex. Das Honekrasova, known for an interaction with a reporter from Infowars, created and stars in this film and it doesn't hold punches. I'm not quite sure whether she is sarcastic about all the conspiracy stuff or not but she opens a well-known can of worms. It doesn't say anything new and it is a whole lot of conjecture but the mere fact this exists is quite the feat. Whether or not it's a good movie I'm not sure. It definitely kept my attention and I was, if that's the right word, entertained throughout the film. It's cheap, Low budget and almost faux documentary style but it works, including the more objectionable scenes. This is a movie that intends to shock, and it does its job. Also, hashtag Robotron did not kill himself. 
check that. A Grey State is a documentary about the making of an independent dystopian film about the New World Order and their plans for humanity that was being crowdfunded for years by David Crowley. Crowley, who did his military service in the Middle East, got disillusioned by the government and started going down the rabbit hole of Freemasonry, the New World Order and all of that fun stuff, when all of a sudden he and his family, consisting of his child and wife, are found dead in their home they themselves become part of the conspiracy. Grey State, the documentary, delves into David Crowley and who he was, going through the motions of filming, talking to friends, family and co-workers and sheds a light on the family dynamics. Things turn dark however after they deal with the murder and what appears to be the truth seeps through the cracks. I generally don't like documentaries for the way they are set up but this one peels back layer after layer only to show the probable truth behind what actually happened. And it's disturbing whichever side you are on. One thing is certain, David always had a plan and that plan was performed beat by beat. You can decide for yourself whether or not the conspiracy holds up by the end of this stock. Maybe making the dock was part of the conspiracy after all. It's a sad tale in either case. A very sad tale indeed. Check that. Blowout is what happens when a tire explodes often making the car it was attached to uncontrollable. This is exactly what happens when Jack, a movie sound engineer played by John Travolta, is recording some sounds for a feature horror film he is working on. The blowout sends a car into the river and he promptly decides to save the passengers inside. When he is told not to speak about the incident at the hospital he finds it all a bit weird. Things get even weirder when the news brings up some information that doesn't fit with the audio recording he has of the incident. A cover up I say. And Jack isn't having any of it. Needless to say that the powers that be will try and do any to keep the truth from hitting the population. Brian De Palma's blowout is an effective paranoid thriller with a still fresh John Travolta. The plot is believable enough and the although some of the scenes where he is piecing things together is a bit iffy it holds up to make this a compelling movie. Simple and straightforward and definitely a good watch. Check that. One by One is a 2014 movie with the late Rick Maple who, by the way, suddenly died of a heart attack in June of the same year. The movie shows us a girl who, through her friends at the local coffee shop, goes through the rabbit hole of the New World Order and the 2030 agenda. She starts off as someone who doesn't quit believe in conspiracies but as the proof is slowly revealed to her she realizes something wrong is happening. Mind you, this movie is from 2014 a full six years before the start of the COVID pandemic and years before most of us even knew about the whole 2030 agenda where Klaus Schwab and his cronies are trying to build back back better, introduce a totalitarian new world order where you will own nothing and be happy, under the guise of fear-mongering and other psychological tactics, all to bring the world population to a mere couple of million or less and keep the elites in control feeding us insects while they probably eat lavish. 2014. And this movie laid it all out in a simple yet effective way. The thing is, besides the sudden death of its star, this movie is extremely hard to find. It's not on streaming services. DVDs are absent from stores. I was lucky enough to find it on some video site in a mediocre quality. Since I believe in freedom of information I will offer you three links to their movie so you can enjoy the film and more so, the message for yourself. This isn't the best made movie but the message it sends out into the world is crucial. We cannot let these pigs win, for our sake, for our children's sake, for the sake of humanity. Smash that. Punishment Park is a very dark faux documentary where a group of film crews cover the trial of so-called deviants, hippies, draft dodgers, anti-establishment people, rebels etc. A trial where they get the choice to either serve a decade-long sentence or face the scorching hot desert in a game of capture the flag called Punishment Park. Most pick punishment in the hopes of avoiding decades in jail but find themselves not only facing the heat but also being hunted by soldiers and cops alike. Needless to say that people with opposing views have a certain resentment towards each other and that power corrupts. 
You don't have to be a genius to know what will happen to those who don't toe the line. Punishment Park is a bleak view of what happens when only one side holds all the power. Judge, jury and executioner in a moral quest that only has one point of view. This isn't a happy movie and the sad thing is that it's based on a law called the McCarran Internal Security Act of 1950 which allowed detainment of individuals who were judged to be a risk to internal security. This particular law was lucky abolished in 1972 but many laws and mandates or what not since then pretty much did the same thing. To claim punishment isn't happening in some form somewhere in the world is folly. To claim our western society is free from such gross misuse of power, especially after the past few years and decades, is just plain idiocy. Beware punishment park. Check that. The final countdown aka the USS Nimitz lost in the Pacific tells the tale of the USS Nimitz, an aircraft carrier and one of the United States and world's largest warships in existence. This ship, during a routine trip finds herself encountering a wormhole of sorts and disappears. We follow the crew of the ship as they figure out what is going on and how they will solve the dilemma they are facing as they are pulled in and out of time and space. Although the tale of the USS Nimitz of course is fictional, the stories of Bermuda Triangle and other strange occurrences, occurrences that supposedly have no say in reality but with tic-tac footage being released and largely ignored by everyone we now know that there are strange, unexplained things that do happen in the world. As for the movie, it's simple, real simple and quite predictable, but fun. And that's good enough. Check that. Drum Novel, or Dream Novel is a 1969 Austrian TV movie that gave Stanley Kubrick the idea to make, or remake it into, eyes wide shut. In Drom novel we follow Dr. Fridolin who tends to his patients and afterwards returns home to his loving wife. Like any good husband and wife they have conversations with Yakutha and during one of those his wife confesses that she has had sexual fantasies of another man in the past. Shocking. I know. Though not a big deal now it probably was in 1926 when the original novel was released. Though both agree that they have had this feeling the doctor ventures out and encounters a man who speaks of a secret ball where all kinds of strange stuff happens. Add to that the alluring, albeit too young girl, he encounters at one of his patients with whom there is some financial dealings if you know what I mean and our dear doctor can't resist to be overly curious. He attempts to enter this secret event and find out what's going on. And this my friends, might not have been the wisest thing to do. Drum novel, despite being a TV movie, offers enough for the viewer to weave their own stories around what is happening. And you will have to fill in a lot, since this movie is an hour shorter than the much darker Kubrick counterpart. The true meaning of the party is left a bit ambivalent though the inclusion of the young girl makes for that biting itch on the back of your neck telling you something bad is up. Traum novel is a movie that, in my opinion, should accompany your viewing of eyes wide shut. It's a different beast, but it's similar enough to be a great addition. I will end with the small text that appears at the beginning of the movie. Dreams and waking flow into each other, truth and lies. Safety is nowhere. We know nothing of the other, nothing of ourselves we always play, whoever knows is wise. Check that. Eyes Wide Shut is the 1999 remake of Drawm novel by legendary Stanley Kubrick. We follow Tom Cruise who plays a fancy pants doctor with a fancy pants house and a very fancy, often pants-less, wife played by Nicole Kidman. They go to a fancy dinner where the wife openly flirts with a guy and two models openly flirt with the doctor. He gets called off for an emergency however, later, as one would expect. He gets flack for being with those two girls. His wife confesses to having a fantasy to be screwed by another guy at one point in her life. Relationship drama. Oh dear. Rules for thee but not for me much. Anyways, Tom gets a little upset knowing that his wife does want to screw other people while he has been a fairly dutiful husband. And so he goes on the lam where he meets an old friend who talks about a secret party. Secret party you say? Well, let's crash it. Tough luck for our dear friend the doctor when he pretty much enters the party akin to the bohemian grove parties oh oopsie there's way more to this movie and as you might expect from kubrick there's 
intentional or not, hidden messages and meanings in almost every scene. The party is filled with Venetian masked and robed individuals, loads and loads of naked models with perky breasts. There's sex, mystery, a 16-year-old Lily Soboski in lingerie. Wait, what? Oh no no, Kubrick sure got us the didn't he? And yes, there are theories that this film is not just about an exuberant orgy. Some even say it addresses the cabal of child and woman trafficking that is going on in the elite environments. Allegedly, all this could very well be true. I certainly believe it. It's Kubrick after all. He made the world believe we visited the moon. Classic. Eyes wide shut. The name itself infers that we firmly keep our eyes closed for certain things. And much like the movie title from another guy we should. Open your eyes. See the truth even if it is muddled with distractions. Obscured. Blurry. Eyes Wide Shut is a great film and a must-see. It doesn't go overly far into the weirdness which, in a way, makes it even more effective. Putting a mock sacrifice in it of say a virgin or a child in front of a giant statue of an owl while everyone is chanting some satanic hum would be a little bit too much. That's only reserved for satanic horror films and meetings of ex-presidents corporate and world leaders. Meanwhile I'm on my sofa drinking a coffee. Life is unfair if you wish to keep a soul. Do I even have a soul? Smash that. Well, all of those movies of course don't have any connection to anything that happened or could happen in real life. I'll be hiding out in my bunker just in case they hunt me down for this. Though of course that's something they would never do. Epstein killed himself. McAfee too. Pizzagate doesn't exist. Gates just wants to make people happy. JFK was shot by a commie. And we don't all have to eat insects while owning nothing in our little environmental pods and be happy about it. Move along. Nothing to see here.